Good morning, my fellow researchers from China and also Malaysia. My name is Claire, and I would like to talk about China investment in Malaysia under the Belt and Road Initiative, the case of Forest City, Iskandar, Malaysia. So I'll kick off today's presentation with a brief introduction. Then, Forest City development process, which is divided into three phases, and also factor how it has turned into the White Elephant projects and followed by conclusion. So over the last decades, the phenomenon of a surge of China investment in real estates, urban development, and infrastructures has metamorphosed the skyline and cityscape around the world. And Forest City Project is well known for its Splendo mega developments targeting 700,000 population, where the exclusive private city is built on four reclaimed artificial islands, Renzaotao, on the tip of Peninsula Malaysia, located merely at the narrow state which separate Malaysia and Singapore. Right? So Forest City is a mega project located in Johor Bahru, Singsan a southernmost city in Malaysia. It is also one of the biggest states with the current population of 3.79 million people. For the past several years, there is a weakness of mass increase in real estate development from China real estate developers such as RNF Princess Cove by Guangzhou RNF Properties, Country Garden Dangabe, Forest, Forest City by the Country Garden Group, Greenland Dangabe, and Greenland Tabrao by Greenland Group. Uh so we move on to Malaysia has become a breeding ground of Chinese investment for a few attractive reasons, such as for its rich natural resources, hungriness for FDI, foreign, foreign uh, development in investment, low labor costs, and strategic location of located next to Singapore. Real estate development focusing intensely in the Special Economic Zones, SEZ, of Iskandar, Malaysia, Johor, as we can see from the map here, all right, from my PPT, okay. Uh, this Forest City project is located at the places where Nusa, Nusa Jaya and B and C, the point B and C, all right. So China is then surprised Singapore to become the main and largest real estate investor in Malaysia in 2013 and then become the largest overall foreign investor in Malaysia in 2016, okay. So nonetheless, Forest City project has launched in 2014 is much bigger in scale and it shows the ambition of the developer after the successful launch of the first project, Country Garden Danga Bay in 2012. All right. So to date, the total completed construction area is about 4 million square meter with two five-star hotels, two international standard 18 whole golf courses, an international school, comprehensive commercial facilities and four kilo kilometers coastline with public facilities and amenities. And also 15,000 of residential keys has been handed over in 2019 and land reclamation for the second island was delayed due to the pandemic of COVID-19. Right. So we move on to the development phase one in Forest City, which happened in 2014 and 2016. Forest City portrayed itself as a luxury seafront and cliff, an investment paradise for China investors. The first challenge faced was ecology, environmental, and legal concession. In June, back in 2014, Malaysia Federal Department of Environment issued a stop construction order to Forest City, acquiring a complete and detailed environmental impact assessment. However, later in January 2015, approval to continuous construction were received with the con condition of the original area would be stringed by one third and split into four islands instead of one island so that the seagrass, the environmental issue, 
could regain habitat in the canals between the four reclaimed islands. Right. So by 2016, 70% of the units were purchased by Chinese nationals was reported. And the project also promised foreign buyers with fast-track permanent resident visas if they buy property at Forest City through Malaysia, Malaysia My Second Home Program, MM2H, Malaysia Jiayuan Jihua. Right? And it also promised to its investor additional tax incentive. Therefore, it, it actually attracts a lot of Chinese investors to buy the condos here. Right? So in phase two, which happened in 2017 to 2019, Forest City go through the process of localization and internationalization of the luxury seafront and cliff. So during this time, the really the ruling party was APNO of, in Malaysia, led by Malaysia Prime Minister, my Minister Najib Razak, who supported the foreign investment. However, Jun Dr. Mahathir appeared as one of the most aggressive and high-profile critics over Chinese investment in Malaysia. So in May 2018, Tun M won the election and become Prime Minister of Malaysia again after his retirement. So right after being elected, Tun M halted numerous Chinese invested mega projects in August 2018, which includes a nat natural gas pipeline and the East Coast Rail Link, and also make announcement on visas would not be granted for foreigners for purchasing property in Forest City. Okay, so, so in order to continue to strive and survive for, for Forest City, Forest City have to go through localization and internet, internationalization. So the localization process can be seen by recruiting more Malaysian workers in, in Forest City projects, introducing affordable housing plans for Malaysians and other uh, races, adding Malay culture elements in the sales gallery, showrooms and projects, Malay traditional musicians and drummers in sales gallery to greet potential buyers to deliver a multicultural and internationalization experience. We can also witness the shift from targeting Chinese investor, elite investor, to become a global metropolis which welcome multicultural and nationalities buyers. Right, so the shift happened for two notable reasons. First, China foreign investment policy changed where it implemented strict capital controls to limit outflows of capital from the country. And second, the change of Malaysia ruling political leaders and parties and the attitude and stand towards China investment in Malaysia. Okay, so we move on to phase three, which is which happened in the year of 2020 to present days. So Forest City nowadays portray itself as an ecology smart city and this phase three strategy is seen to emphasize on environmental, economic and social logy beneficial coexist with the local communities. So Forest City launched an eco museum in September 2020 to display local marine habitats to the public as a means to create awareness of environment protection and education. So with its ecological development action plan, Forest City also declared that green and smart will be their pie water focus for the upcoming development from the year 2020 to 2023, okay, in order to combat or face the challenges what they face in phase, uh, phase one challenges, okay. So next, we move on to some crucial factors on how Forest City turned into the White Elephant Project. All right. The first factor will be the questions of safety, environment, and ecology. One of the most issues troubling and keep bias on bay is the question of safety because some cracks are obvious to the eyes of public in show units, sales gallery, and hotels. Moreover, the sign of settlement and ground level sinking can be found at some sections of new routes around the 
reclaimed islands around the new mega projects. Okay, and wiring project sorry wiring problems, dropping of chunks of ceilings, glass door shattered, roof leaking are the common problem faced by the community living in forest cities. All right. So second factors will be complex political compilation, the friction between the ruling political party and the Sultan of Johor has turned Forest City Mega Project into the unconscious pawn in this political positioning. And Forest City is a state project supported by the Sultan of Johor and the location of Forest City Project coincidentally barricade the development plans of Tanjong Pelepas Port, a federal project initiated by Tun M, hence put Forest City into an embarrassed position of public relations scenarios. And this created pu negative publicity for Forest City image. And third factor, is there a market? Forest City mega project did not appear in the eyes of Malaysian buyers as the price is high and location is too far from the city centers. Moreover, Malaysians have better interest on landed properties rather than condominiums. The real estate prices in Forest City also reported higher than the market price in Johor Bahru. And Singaporeans are also not keen on buying property in Forest Cities as Johor State Real Estate Minimum Purchase Price Regulation where foreigners are only eligible to buy properties worth more than 1 million ringgit and tax of 30% for any property sold within five years of purchase. So, as a conclusion, in this paper, the demonstration of how Malaysia, a small player in geopolitics and global economics, reacts to the mega new Chinese invested built city. And Forest City, as a mega real estate project in Johor, undeniably heightened Johor economic stance. However, some parameters are miscalculated when it comes to the calculation of costs, benefits, and impacts brought by this development. Sorry, With phase two and three developments, effort can be seen as Forest City has rebranded itself as a green, smart and futuristic city that not only targeted at Chinese elite investor, but also other foreigners from other countries to create a multicultural international uh, cities. So the importance of striking a balance between environmental conservation and preservation working closely with Malaysian's government, economic, sociology, sustainability are the key success factor for this mega project for a city. So that's all for my presentation for today. Thank you so much.